Welcome to the first lecture in the series, Calculus Made Easy. Calculating Usain Bolt's Power. Applying Calculus to a Real-World Example. The narration in this presentation is powered by SpeechOver, with computer-generated text-to-speech voices that are automatically synced with the animations. Usain Bolt, the fastest man on Earth. Usain broke the world's record in the 100-meter dash, with a time of 9.58 seconds. At the 2009 World Championships in Berlin, Bolt's maximum speed in the 100-meter final was 12.27 meters per second, or 44.17 kilometers per hour, that's 27.3 miles an hour. We will now show you exactly how powerful Usain is. In horsepower, we'll base our results on real measurements of his sprint, and use the laws of physics and the differential and integral calculus to calculate the power. Here are the steps we'll be using to calculate the power. First, we obtain actual data of Hussein's speed from the International Association of Athletics Federations, the IAAF. We'll construct an empirical formula for Hussein's speed by fitting a curve to the actual data. We identify the laws of physics relevant to a person running. Then, we'll derive the formula for speed from the physical laws. Finally, we'll get the value of Hussein's power by comparing the empirical formula for speed with the derived formula. In addition, we'll calculate the force on Hussein due to the air resistance. Here are the results of the speed measurements made by a LiDAR device a very precise laser range finder. The red line shows the average speed versus the distance. The graph can be divided into two sections. First, an acceleration section in which the speed increases rapidly for the first 20 meters and then levels off as air resistance takes effect. And second, a constant speed section, in which Usain's propulsive force is just balanced by the air resistance. We get an empirical formula for the speed in the acceleration phase by fitting a curve to the points on the graph. The resulting formula shows that the speed depends on the cube root of the distance. The green line on this graph shows the empirical curve, superimposed on the original curve. It is a good fit for lower speeds, but starts to deviate as the speed approaches its peak value. Now we'll derive the theoretical formula for the speed. First, let's present the physical laws of running that we'll use. The first physical law is Newton's second law of motion. When a force F is applied to an object with mass M, the object accelerates with an acceleration A, which is proportional to the force. Applying this equation to Usain's movement, the force exerted by the ground on Usain the reaction of his pushing on the ground, from Newton's third law, causes him to accelerate, according to his mass. The second physical law we need is the equation for the power. When a force F causes an object to move at a certain speed V, the force is said to generate power, P. The power is calculated according to the equation P equals F times V. Applying this formula to Usain, the power he generates is equal to the force the ground exerts on him, times his speed. We assume that Usain generates constant power over the entire length of his run. An assumption frequently made in the physics of running. Constant power means that as his speed increases, the force he exerts decreases proportionally. Now we'll derive the theoretical formula for speed as a function of x using differential and integral calculus. Start with the second law of motion, F equals MA. Multiply both sides of the equation by V, getting, FV equals MAV. The left side of the equation FV is just the power, P, which is assumed constant. So we get, P equals MAV. Since A is the derivative of V with respect to time, we get a differential equation for V, V dV dt equals P over M. 
the ratio of power to mass on the right side is the constant z, the zip value. Integrating both sides of the differential equation from 0 to t, and using the initial condition v equals 0 1 t equals 0, we get, v equals the square root of 2 z times the square root of t. This is the formula for the speed as a function of time. Integrating once again from 0 to t, and using the initial condition x equals 0 1 t equals 0, we get the formula for the distance as a function of time, x equals the square root of 8z over 9 times t to the 3 halves power. Solving for t as a function of x, and substituting it in the formula for v, we get v as a function of x to the 1 third power. This is the formula that we will compare with the empirical one. From the empirical data we had arrived at this formula. And, from the laws of motion we derive this formula. Comparing them, we see that both formulas are functions of x to the third with constant coefficients, so the coefficients must be equal to one another. Equating the coefficients of x to the third, we get an equation for z. Now we are in a position to solve for Usain's power. Solving the previous equation for z, we get, z equals 24.058. Recalling the definition of the zip, z equals p over m, we finally get the equation for the power, p equals mz. Substituting Usain's mass, 90 kilograms, for m. We get Usain's power to be 2165 watts. Which, after dividing by 746, is 2.9 horsepower. Usain's power is equal to 1, 2, 3 horses. That's power. We now have enough information to calculate the air resistance and the drag coefficient. In the constant speed section of the run, Usain's force is constant and is counterbalanced by the force due to air resistance, Fu equals Fa. We'll obtain Fa by calculating Fu. Recalling that the power P is constant and is equal to force F times speed V, then the force F is the power P over the speed V. Substituting the known constant values, we get 2165 over 12.3. Or a force of 180 newtons. And, from the first equation above, this is equal to the value of the air resistance force. To get the drag coefficient c, we use the general formula for the force on an object due to air resistance, Fa equals 0.5 rho v squared ca. Where rho is the atmospheric density, 1.2 at 20 degrees Celsius. V is the speed, which equals 12.3 meter per second. A is Usain's cross-sectional area equals 0.5 meter squared. Substituting in the first equation above, the drag coefficient C equals 3.97. This is much higher than the drag coefficient of a body at rest with a fluid flowing around it, which is approximately equal to 1. The explanation for the higher drag force seems to be the turbulence created by the motion of Usain's arms and legs. In addition, Usain has pulled ahead and so is working against the air by himself with no help from the others. This lesson was brought to you by Two Vowel Software Industries, developers of SpeechOver, for easy to create, easy to change, audio presentations for business and education using text-to-speech voices. Visit our site at www.speechover.com.